Imagine an outside force enters your land in an attempt to colonize your nation. They force their way into your house and drag the women and children outside into the dirt. Then they burn down the homes with all the family's possessions inside. Afterwards, the conquerors force the families into strange lands and demand they pay harsh fees for basic shelter for vulnerable babies and elderly parents. In such places, they have no access to their regular jobs and services that they were used to. So they struggle to adjust and pay the high rental fees. Whilst in the same neighborhood, some residents sold their loyalty to the invading forces and their houses remain secure as they are given their subservience to this outside occupying nation. Now this might sound like a history lesson concerning the European colonialists occupying a poor country in the 19th century. But what would you think if we said this was describing Egypt in the year 2020? And the worst part is this is not an invading force, but the same government themselves that are supposed to protect their own people. Housing is not just a basic right written into the constitution of Egypt, it plays a critical role in the social and political life. In Egypt, the house you have can determine marriage proposals, invigorate or slow down the economy, and raise up or bring down a ruler. Egyptian leaders have long associated themselves with at least one mega housing project per campaign. Today, glossy real estate brochures and media ads declare this big business. Egypt is currently the leader in per capita housing production, almost double that of China, creating a surplus that counts into the millions of units. How shockingly then today we find Egypt is in the grip of a housing crisis. الحق كل مصري او كل مواطن مصري ان يبقى ليه حق في السكن تاخد شقه وتعيش كويس وتاكل كويس وكل ده ده حقك انت كمصري حق ماشي ماشي حق اه اه اطلبه من مين؟ لا انا ما اعرفش الحاجات دي الحق في السكن بنسمع عنه بس ما بنلاقيش قدامنا لا مش موجود نهائي سمعنا كلام كتير بس كان مقطوع شويه بوست عرب سبرينج with the insecure finance markets, Sisi and his regime were seeking to accumulate more wealth and popularity votes. He wanted to increase capital gains through housing and calculated that new buildings could open up the market to investors. However, this would need prime real estate land. The cunning Sisi seemed to have found a ruthless way to overcome his obstacle. So he launched a full out assault on vulnerable self built housing. They would be demolished and people simply uprooted. Not surprisingly, in June 2016, he announced his plans to eliminate all such houses, slating them as slums within two years. But as you can see, these so called slums are not desperate places and are actually thriving today. A ready-made market was available with Gulf investors who do not trust in savings and wanted something concrete for their capital. Inspired by greed, CC looked for a legal loophole to literally steal land and housing from supposed illegal local residents and sell it on with big profits. He claimed this land was agricultural and owned by the government and he was reclaiming it. 
Yet in the 1960s, the government regime had allowed the people to build here without restraint, even providing schools and hospitals to help build communities. But with corruption embedded in the fabric of the Arab world, such a practice is far from shocking. From top to bottom, everybody wants a slice of the pie. لا ما ممكن الوزير يقول قرار واللي من تحتي ما بينفس حاضر وبتاع وشغل ورق لكن الواقع بيقفشني بيني وبينه وبياخد مني خلاص الوزير شايف ولا حد شايف اللي عمله الحي هو يجوا ياخدوا فلوس وياكلوا ويشربوا الزبادي الخلاط ويشربوا النسكافيه وياخدوا بعضهم يتوكلوا على الله ادي اللي الحي ده في واحد كان بيجي له الحي في واحد كان بيجي له مكان شهريه Now, Sisi had a legitimate excuse. Demolition became his weapon of choice. 60% of the people living 50% of the housing, some 11 million people with no legal paperwork found themselves vulnerable or simply kicked out. Sisi could now demolish these buildings and sell the land on to prospective investors. A real estate agent from Alexandria admitted that of 120 apartments he sold in one year, approximately half went to wealthy Egyptian expats who now live in Gulf states. In a nation with people spilling on the streets, desperate for shelter, how a second home is even allowed? Track records show the expats price the common people out of the housing market. We have enough technical and engineering equipment to go to every place and demolish all these violating buildings. <laughs> Now, another argument proposed by Sisi's regime was that cell fields were not safe and prone to collapse. Yet reports state only about 3% of the buildings are in this case. Most are built of solid brick and cement, not the flimsy temporary iron roof shacks we see in Latin America. They were built with care as the builders lived there themselves, not by construction companies who take shortcuts to materials and safety to increase on profits. Another excuse is the government equates poverty with crime, but we find the opposite the case, people helping each other time and time again in these communities and living in harmony. لكن احنا بالنسبه لنا احسن منطقه في العالم كفايه ان مفيش حد في سرقه واحده حصلت ان مفيش حد جرؤ يخش منطقتنا احنا رجاله وقفنا حمامنا so simply put the cc regime thinks that people are not useful to the state unless they're paying high rents or crippling mortgages cc simply wants mega rich oil leaders to invest their money Likewise, new luxury housing is essential to secure financial loans to feed international banks, part of CC's special deal. But at what cost to the lives of the poor whose houses are destroyed and they're left abandoned to fend for themselves? So CC, why doesn't he just realize that with so many houses in decay, instead of just demolishing them all, it would be cheaper to renovate them and restore them to their original order? And this would save millions, but instead, no, he wants to demolish them all. So let us look at the evidence at the ground level to see really what is taking place today. In Mardi, Cairo, in 2014, 22 apartment buildings were demolished, not with bulldozers, but with actually dynamite. So the government would claim that the residents didn't have the appropriate paperwork. Now, as if this is enough reason to blow up people's houses they've lived in for more than 50 years. Yet it seems many did have the legal paperwork. Quote, I have all the documentation that proves the land is mine. This is a court order issued in 2006. I tried to show it to the officers and they told me they just were enforcing a decision that had already been taken and that the papers didn't mean anything to them." End quote. 
This man only knew of the plans the day that the demolition team showed up. A computer engineer living locally declared that this is criminal. These people have the paperwork to prove ownership of the land. And official media reports declared one child being killed, but residents said there were at least 20 children killed. And a video proved this, but this has now been taken down from social media. And it showed families screaming in grief, surrounding the corpse, remonstrating with security forces who even fired tear gas on them. One reporter said on arrival, residents were dragging through the rubble and the smell of blood was guiding their search. Surely dynamite without evacuation was bound to result in casualties. And many people searching for loved ones and possessions ended up with serious injuries amongst the rubble. What kind of government treats its people with dynamite with no reason or warning? Now, even more shockingly, the head of the local government tried to justify the actions claiming the dead child was delivered to the parents in a pristine condition. As if the fact that the child was not dismembered made everything okay. This is simply disgusting. Now, just a few days later, after all this destruction and death of young children, the investment board comes up on the land, this land in devastation, and it says Medi Investment Company. And what is startling is this is part of the government organization. So in other words, the government is going to benefit and gain financial rewards from the death and destruction of its people. <laughs> Are these not the same poor people CC promised to provide accommodation for? Where is the compliance with international law concerning lawful eviction? People cling even to their electricity receipts, sometimes a meter, as proof that they paid for over 20 years, but still live in fear they will be denied a new house. This practice seems to continue unchallenged. As recently as September 2020, villages were literally being razed to the ground in what resembles a war zone. Here we see residents defending themselves from what looks like an unwanted assault on their housing. What is so shocking is this not even a war on another nation, but by Sisi targeting his own people. From 2011 to today in Alexandria, over 133,000 demolition orders have been issued. Now, if it was not enough that people were going to sleep with a constant threat of one of Sisi's bulldozers coming through their walls, we also see in Egypt today, despite the targeting of self-builds, roughly 400 modern apartments built by construction companies with government authority collapsing in year. Now, many of these houses are like layer cakes, which spring up before the cement has even time to harden. Now, in just one year, from July 2012 to June 2013, 392 buildings fell down. Now, this came with 192 deaths and over 800 families made homeless. This is not to mention unreported cases. And how is this possible if the regime has stringent safety regulations and maintenance policies? So why are they, the Egyptian government, destroying people's houses, which are often solid and decent, and yet their own public buildings are collapsing time and time again? First one building collapsed, then three others fell like dominoes. Military rescue teams have already pulled at least 19 bodies from the rubble, and they're looking for others. At this stage, there's little hope of finding anyone alive. At a nearby mosque, families are saying goodbye to their loved ones. Almost everyone knows somebody who has lost a relative. Their grief is mixed with anger at the authorities, whom they accuse of putting money before human life. Now, like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, we have a Leaning Tower in Alexandria, but this is not a tourist attraction. A pensioner 
walking home, looked up and saw her 13-storey housing block had toppled and was only supported by falling on another block. She called the authorities and they said it was normal. It is a very tall building and many lost their houses and became refugees at the local masjid. Now it came to light that the permit granted was only for four storeys, but by bribing authorities, it was built much taller. The foundation rods you could describe as shorter than a coffee table, a sign of companies flouting laws and government corruption in the face of money. A building inspector said this was normal. Unless there was a disaster, no action is taken. Families have been resettled miles from the original buildings and husbands and wives segregated in shelters, a virtual prison sentence. Is this sham of a regime not charging people to live in matchstick houses and then leaving them broken on the streets when things fall apart? <laughs> وبعدين قالوا ما فيش حاجه وبتاع بعد كده المايه بعد ما شبعت البيوت تماما اصل المنطقه عايش على مايه جوفيه اساسا مايه جوفيه ده تحت الارض منها مايه مجاري بدات تاكل في الاساسات البيوت وقعت في بعضها بشكل كده زي الشطرنج بالظبط احنا اصلا عايشين عيشه الحمد لله رب العالمين عايشين عيشه يعني اعزكم الله عيشه حشرات مش عيشه بني ادمين يعني الريحه ديت لو في بيت بني ادم ممكن يحصل له مصيبه سوداء طبعا الاوبئه والامراض والفشل الاكتئاب كل ده من الامراض اللي عندنا بسبب المشاكل ديت حاجه ما تتوصفش احنا بنعاني من الجوع كمجتمع فقير وصابرين وبنعاني من المرض لان ما عندناش مستشفى وساكتين اصبحوا كمان تخشوا ميه المجاري بوت والله يا ابني انا بطل جنب ميه المجاري والله انا جنب عامل متر في الارض بحت وادي صاحب البيت اللي انا ساكن فيه عشان اسحب الميه عشان ما نجرحش انا واولادي Now in Cairo, with so much twisted logic from Sisi's regime, we find a furious campaign to build buildings and superhighways. Now officials claim they are desperate to ease traffic congestion. Yet we see in reality, they seem to gain popularity votes, linking wealthy suburbs and sealing construction deals. In many cities, this usually involves a ring road to avoid endangering lives and damaging buildings. However, in Giza, Cairo, as part of the Canal of Zomur Axis project, we see a 370 million US dollar project to build a motorway flyover in a downtown area, literally next to huge apartment complexes. It is almost as if it is a flyover that was supported by being attached to the balconies, less than an arm's reach from them. So basically, the government is legislating to build super highways next to the balconies, so you reach out your hand and you're able to touch them. This is incredible. On the lower floor flats, the shops are now virtually underground and will never receive sunlight again. Burglars are acting like this is an opportunity to break into apartments and the route will be so busy it will link Giza and 750,000 cars a day will use this. So how can regulations allow for development in such a densely populated area? Can such lucrative deals that neglect human concerns ever be justified? What about the risk of lives for the children with the traffic, the noise, all this pollution? And under the media glare, the ministry tried to justify their actions, declaring the buildings were illegal and earmarked for destruction. So surely the right thing to do would be to destroy the buildings before building the superhighways if that was a concern. Now, Sisi claims he wants to ease congestion, make things better for the people. So why is it always that these superhighways seem to link to the wealthy estates of the rich? And why is it that the people who are suffering are only ever the poor people? So simply put, the historically and culturally diverse Cairo has been buried deep in the cement, lost like the city of Atlantis. عايشين هنا وسط التراب وكده آه يعني ما بتخافوش مثلا 
لا احنا بنقفل المقت هنا وخط السبان بينام على الطرق اتعودت خلاص خلاص ما بنخافش عشان الناس بره بتفتكر غير كده لا بتقول ازاي الناس دي عايشه وسط الميتين وسط التراب وكده اه من الحشيش اللي شغلهم ده حرام كله قول عضل This is bone. The tiba hormet the man. It seems death is not a protection from Sisi's plans to divide Cairo. In what some commentators describe as the highway to hell, Ottoman graves and mausoleums recognised by UNESCO. The plan is to create new arteries to link wealthy gated complexes of the elite. One 500-year-old tomb will now be surrounded by multi-lane highways. Antiquity experts declare these buildings from the 7th century are protected in Egyptian law. In a city of over 18 million people, many have formed vibrant communities amongst the walled yards in the oldest city of dead in the Arab world. They have existed for centuries as legal guardians for the tombs, which are a refuge for those unable to pay any rents. Now they are being made homeless with no resettlement program in sight. In what must seem like an earthquake, the only warning for one family was when the bulldozer came through the walls and they were simply tossed out onto the streets. One elderly lady has lived there for over 40 years and now her sanctuary has been destroyed. So what hope is there for these poor and desperate and often chronically sick elderly people? Is it not sad to think that such a nation with a rich history that gave us the iconic pyramids allows communities to live and die amongst the dead as well? Today, the egomania has reached epic proportions under Sisi who, like so many predecessors, wants to immortalize his legacy in the brickwork. Each new leader seems to come with bigger and more glitzy projects. He wants to be remembered as the one who transformed his city into the new Dubai or Singapore. Now sold as his Maspero master plan, an urban regeneration scheme, but for which people? A special ministry created called the Urban Renewal Scheme seemed to offer much hope. Now this was headed by Leila Iskander, and she demanded no forced evictions. And initially, local residents were consulted, but this was obviously a PR stunt, and it was soon revealed when she was kicked out. There was no vision to provide shelter and hope for some of the desperate two million homeless, but instead an amusement park of malls and luxury hotels for the filthy rich elite and their circus entertainers. As proven by Sisi's testimony to the destruction and last rites of the oldest watch shop in Cairo. How is this possible when buildings over 100 years in Egypt should have heritage status? Whilst many other people's houses are literally crumbling around them, CC legislated for an outlandish outlay which had displaced roughly 18,000 residents. The demolition work alone cost around 170 million UK pounds. Mounds of broken stone and rubble piled up, creating hazards and churning up suffocating dust that choked the residents, as if from a bombing raid. A paltry offer of 50,000 Egyptian pounds to evacuate them fell well below the market value, leaving many vulnerable to homelessness. They are targeting impoverished people who don't have official papers, who are paying low rents as evictions are so cheap legally. Many residents stated they obtained their permits in 2008 so they could not be illegal. But a deal with top British architects, Foster and Partners, ensured big financial gains for Sisi and his regime. More alarmingly, the glossy ads revealed wide open boulevards and roof gardens reminiscent of the splendor of old Egypt. But when the rest of the nation is literally dying out for a safe haven, how sickening is this? And with the plans completed, there is a ready line of usual suspects to pounce oil rich aristocrats from Gulf nations who buy up the stock denying Egyptians a right to their own housing.
لا بس برضو هيجوا يبنوا اه جنبه كده Now, all of this Sisi egomania is paving the way for the new capital, 45 kilometers east of Cairo, a mega glitzy 58 billion US dollar desert project overseen by the military regime. The emphasis here seems on creating a playground for the rich politicians and celebrities away from the pollution of commotion of downtown Cairo. Sisi seeks more fame and glory and publicity for votes. Surely just a fraction of money could be used to house the displaced and homeless people in Egypt. Now, most of CC's new projects are built through city investors, extremely expensive. So now 7 million units are unoccupied. Yet on the flip side, affordable housing is virtually zero and desperate people are scared for their children's future. Is this not a treasonable offense by CC regime in anyone else's language? <laughs> Is it any wonder this war against his own nation led to Sisi and his elite being exposed by former contractor Muhammad Ali in 2019? He showed how Sisi squandered billions on vanity projects, such as the presidential palaces and even a luxury hotel for the military in Cairo. <laughs> so only now people have reached boiling point and are bravely protesting as there is still no justice. So shockingly, some influential activists were even apprehended before the protests, indicative of the degree of paranoia CC is feeling today. Others have been met with assaults and imprisonment by the authorities. But as Ali says, people must stay strong now. And we pray that people have finally seen through the facade of propaganda and are calling time on CC's regime. He offers no security and well-being for Egyptians who are abandoned while Sisi is concerning concentrating more power in the hands of his elite. So ultimately to Sisi, it really seems some humans are more equal than others. Exclusive villas and palaces of Sisi remain intact, while on nearby land, the houses of the desperate and poor are demolished with all their possessions. House builders bribe government officials to break laws. And when they come tumbling down, these buildings kill innocent children and these owners face no charges. Now, Sisi is clearly following in the footsteps of the ancient tyrants, such as the Pharaoh of the time of Moses, who himself reached such a degree of cruelty and negligence of his people. And with no alternative parties being allowed, there is no internal challenge. And even if Sisi is removed, surely the military regime will put another merciless dictator in his place. So wake up, Egypt, and fight back and take your rights as you deserve.